Okay, Mitch, I'm gonna hang up. Hey, look at that. Okay, I'm not sure how this works. It says it's it should be live on Facebook, I think. Yeah. Thanks, Okay. okay. I'm just gonna make this a little smaller. <laughs> I don't know. I I've never done this before, so I'm very lost. So if anybody's tuning in right now, um, <laughs> welcome to a series of unfortunate events <laughs> where we have uh, come against quite a few technical issues. Uh, YouTube is, for all intents and purposes, uh, betrayed us. So we are trying something new. You guys can keep talking. I just don't know how to um how to get it so you guys can see comments because I know that's kind of the point of this. Right. Well, we have seven minutes left, so maybe we can. Um... <laughs> oh, we got to still do it or? <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll do a little devotional thought. Mitch, you want to kick us off with uh, our topic for the day, maybe a scripture. I can't hear Mitch. All right, I'm here. I was looking at the Facebook on there. So uh, welcome. As Ben previously said, uh, YouTube Live has betrayed us this evening. And so we are here for a seven minute T-Votion. What a perfect number, Mitch, seven minutes. It is wonderful. And so uh, if you're just joining us, uh, thank you for being here. And uh, <laughs> it has been a comedy of errors. Uh, and so, uh, let's pray <laughs> with that being said, Lord, we thank you for this time and we thank you for, uh, technology, um, and being able to connect us. Uh, we pray for or your guidance and your wisdom, and we pray for this world, um, uh, where there's so much hurt and so much injustice, uh, break our hearts and move us to action in, uh, in response to, uh, the wrong that we see in this world and show us what it means to love, um, in the midst of all of this. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, so I guess with our time, we were planning on having a conversation around discipleship. Uh, and so why don't you kick us off a little bit, Ben, uh, with uh, what is discipleship? And uh, I know this great commission that we were going to dive into. Uh, why don't you just kind of set us up? Yeah, I think modern day churches, we have a very good grasp on the words of the Great Commission. Jesus, before ascending into heaven, tells his disciples, go and make disciples of all nations. And we often take that to be what we call like a missional statement. This is like a core purpose of the church. And yet it's, a, it's one of those buzzwords that often fades into ambiguity. And it's really helpful to take some time reading and meditating upon what Jesus meant when he said a disciple. And we can look at that through how he generated disciples himself, how he taught, how he uh, led people along a certain path of wisdom and of love and compassion. Uh, and the word disciple literally means like one who learns, one who is being taught something. And so we know that being a disciple isn't just uh, something we say or profess with our mouths. It is it, it is us learning. It is this process of us transforming ourselves through what we're learning. And I think scripture backs that up with how Jesus invites his disciples and how we are then also told to be a part of multiplying discipleship. He told his disciples to go make disciples. Those disciples are supposed to go make disciples. And so we in the modern church, we have a habit of saying, oh, I'm a Christian, but I'm not a disciple. And, and we stratify this thing we call discipleship you're we, we kind of uh, separate people into layers like you're you got this really holy person and oh yeah they're definitely a disciple of jesus but i just go to church on sunday or whatever and we act like there's this different stratification of uh, how involved we are in our faith and the reality is that jesus when he said you follow me that is that is all in that is a discipleship there's no difference between being a christian 
and being a disciple of Jesus Christ is very much a holistic thing. And so I was reading a book for one of my classes uh, on discipleship. It is under this laptop. So there it is. So uh, Mike Breen wrote an awesome book. I highly recommend it, Building a Discipleship Culture. And he's talking about discipleship in terms of invitation versus challenge. Jesus set a very high invitation. So he went and met with people the religious experts wouldn't meet with. And he invited people who normally weren't invited in. And he invited them in and gave them a lot of responsibility. He gave them one-on-one -on -one time short um, or an amount of closeness with himself, a high invitation, but there was a high challenge. And we can see that his disciples left everything behind. And he cons consistently told people the cost of discipleship. There is a cost, there is a high challenge to our discipleship nature. And that's something that I think we as Christians need to imbue within ourselves before we can then understand that Christianity is an all-in learning discipleship, tuning everything in our lives. Great. And, and I, I should have said this before, but every Wednesday evening, uh, we have this thing called tea Votions where we uh, sit around, uh, we drink some tea uh, and, uh, and, and have uh, prayerfully uh, edifying conversations and about scripture. And we've been going through the book of Acts and uh, Pastor Janet is normally with us. Uh, and so, uh, but she is on vacation right now. And uh, so if you are watching this, we miss you. And, uh, but basically that uh, we do this every Wednesday, normally again on YouTube live uh, for the time being. Now, Ben, the, uh, one of the things uh, as uh, going back to discipleship and that conversation is, is, um, is, you talked about discipleship as learning, right? And we can, maybe a very broad stroke might be, we learn to be more like Jesus. And, uh, and so one of the interesting questions uh, that I think we can then ask is, well, how do we learn? Not just how do Christian learn, Christians learn, but, but on a very base level, how does one learn? And, uh, and things like watching, uh, things replicating, uh, think failing, uh, we learn by, uh, you know, I, I think about when you touch, you know, when you're a kid, you touch the hot stove and it burns your hand, you you learn not to do that. We also learn by reading and we learn by listening and we learn by doing. Um, but in the context, at least from my experience, in the context of the Christian realm, and maybe your experience is different, but normally when we think of what it means to uh, be in discipleship, uh, one of the very first things that we think about is normally reading. Um, and then maybe, maybe quickly, um, right after that, we think about listening to us to sermons that if we're in discipleship, that we're studying scripture, and that we're listening to the word. Uh, do, I mean, would you agree, disagree that that's a very common understanding of discipleship? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We often kind of distill it down to if you're a disciple, you're, you're in the word daily you know, you're reading the word is what we call it. And, you know, there's discipleship books out the wazoo. You go through a book with your mentor or whatever. And those are good things, but I think you're right that it's, it's a distillation of what discipleship is. Right. And so, so one of the helpful ways that I, I start to think that, or I like to talk to, to people about, um, I know it's 630 already, uh, uh, is, is that, is the difference between uh, formal discipleship and informal discipleship and then in it, or said another way, is that there's knowledge-based discipleship, and then there is behavioral discipleship. And when we take a look at Jesus's life, uh, we see both of those exemplified, right? We see that Jesus walked alongside of the disciples, lived life with them, uh, uh, and as well as, as studied and uh, dove in and he preached in synagogues. And so there was a combination of both. So which kind of starts to challenge me or challenge us perhaps of what if we're really seeking to be disciples and grow in our discipleship, maybe if we're only thinking of it in light of reading, um, we might be missing a, a, a uh, a larger picture of what it means to be a disciple and to be growing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we can look at, you know, when we read scripture, we can see that is a lot more than reading. Uh, when Jesus trained his disciples, there were periods of them listening 
there are periods of them responding, there are periods of them going out and doing likewise. In reality, the scripture, when we're talking about discipleship, we should think of it like a cookbook. You don't buy a cookbook, sit on the couch and read a cookbook, and then you're like, oh, that was a nice time of reading, I'm done. No, you, you get a cookbook and you have this purpose of, I'm going to do something with what I'm reading. I'm going to compare, or I'm gonna combine, I should say, what I'm reading with action. I'm going to do something with what I'm learning. And, and it's a multi-faceted uh, experience. And I think discipleship is much the same way. If we can't look back on our day and say, I have used what I'm reading in the Bible and other books to inform my actions, my speech, my approach to learning other things, then we would say that that's not, that's not doing discipleship a, a favor in, yeah. in our lives. Bob Goff, uh, it, what you said made me think of Bob Goff and his, uh, his, one of his books is called Love Does, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And in it, he talks about how he has moved away from Bible studies to Bible doings. And okay. so, wh- yeah, right. And so where, where he would get together and study scripture for maybe 10 or 15 minutes and then quickly turn around and go, whatever they studied, go and put that into action somehow. Mm-hmm. Um, and so to your point, it was more of, we've read the, you know, this cookbook and then we're going and making something, uh, and unlocking goodness or, or, uh, edifying someone else or whatever it looks like, um, really to be putting our faith into action, um, rather than, uh, sitting with the knowledge, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm going to wrap that thought into something that in my personal devotions this weekend really stood out. I think it was in 1 Peter, uh, no, 1 John, I'm, I'm assuming. And there was a Bible verse that really just struck me. And in 1 John, we typically distill it down to uh, it's just love, like all about love and God is love and love your brother. And that's kind of all we take away from it because it's really important stuff. But there is one verse yeah, First John chapter 3, don't love in word and speech, but in action and in truth. Uh, that's chapter 3, verse 18 there. Let us love in not in word and speech, but in action and truth. And I think that goes right with uh, what does it mean to be a disciple who loves? You know, it's, it's not word. It is not speech. It is not one faceted. It is, it is action. Jesus came and he acted. We are to do likewise. Yeah. Well, it is 635. Um, and uh, if uh, we apologize, I apologize. I went to go and, and uh, started up on YouTube live tonight. And uh, for, for whatever reason, it just wouldn't behave uh, for me tonight. And so we pivoted over to Facebook and we thank you for joining us. Uh, we will be back together next Wednesday evening. Uh, we will have figured out whatever went wrong. Um, thank you for your grace, your understanding. And um, and I guess the, you know, the challenge to all of us um, with this quick conversation and this quick devotion is what does it look like to put our faith into action? What does it look like for us not to just sit with knowledge-based discipleship, but to allow that to impact our behaviors and to be intentional about doing that? Um, and so, and I, I know we could get into uh, recent topics and uh, that uh, Christians need to be vocal and to step forward with the injustices that we're seeing. Um, and so, uh, but that may be a conversation for another night. Uh, so I know you need to get over to a class, actually. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so thank you for joining us, Ben. Thank you for helping. Katie, thank you for stepping in and saving the day technolo- technology-wise. So. Um, uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you, everybody. Indeed. See you, Mitch. Good night.